Okay, we are recording. Yay! Happy uh, November 15th team call. I'm super excited and I'm very sorry also that I forgot last week. I legitimately forgot and I was like, I'm not even going to bullshit them and pretend like I have notes for this because I didn't have them prepared. So I didn't want to put you guys through that. So tonight I want to talk about how to punch fear in the face and do the thing. And I chose this topic because this is something that has actually been applicable to my life in the last little while. And so I wanted to uh, talk about it. So fear is a funny thing because it's totally imagined and it's completely a mental construct. And we know this and yet we still let ourselves become privy to it, you know, and the danger of fear is that if we let ourselves indulge in the what ifs, right, what, what if this happens or whatever, we can so truly cripple our potential and we can actually ruin our own lives. And that sounds so dramatic, but it's true. So I want you guys to just really quickly think of a time when you um, were scared to do something so you didn't do it, right? Maybe you missed out on an opportunity. Maybe you lost an opportunity. Maybe you, uh, I don't know, you were going to join something and didn't or get a job and didn't. And you know what the worst thing other than fear is, is regret. And so I want us to stop that right in its tracks and stop letting fear guide our actions and instead learn to punch it in the face. Hence the name of this team call. So one of the biggest and most common fears around coaching is inviting. And it's a paradox, right? Because we start coaching because we want to pay for this epic, awesome, newfound, healthy lifestyle. And then we cripple ourselves because we fear this rejection, right? So you want to help people, but then you're scared of helping people. And it's like, ah, you suck. Okay, so we just need to stop the madness and just get over our fear Completely. When you're reaching out and you're inviting people to the opportunity, you are giving them a gift that they did not know existed, right? You have this gift and you have an opportunity to help somebody change their life, right? Okay, everybody, just for a second, I know that you're muted, but put your hand up if your life has been changed by Beachbody, right? Like in such a short time, that's huge. There's only a few people on this call and everybody has their hand up. Like what? It's Oh, it's nuts. And I get to feel so special because guess what? I got to have a hand in every single one of those hands pretty much. So that's pretty fun for me. So what I'm trying to get at here is you guys do that for other people, right? It's the best feeling ever. I'm taking credit for this and I want you to be able to feel the same way. It's a huge, it just makes your heart feel so good having a hand in that. Okay. So get out of your own head and you need to just create for yourself a genuine invite script that is excited. It's from the heart and it's proud of what you have to offer. You've got to be proud of what you have to offer, right? Because people pick up on the energy that you put out. If my invites were meek and shy and unsure and shaky, I would not be where I am right now. I would not have the success as a coach that I do right now, right? Hell no. So you have to realize that this gift that we've been given it's available to everybody and it's our responsibility to share it right i would actually feel selfish if i held this for myself and i didn't invite as many people as possible because my life has been flipped completely 180 degrees through beach body through shakeology through the coaching opportunity through everything so i want to pay that forward to as many people as possible that's my mission right so <clears throat> here's the thing if you're not inviting your business is dying. I'm getting so melodramatic on this call, but it's true, okay? And Beachbody created Success Club for us so that we can have a tool of measurement for our business growth. When I'm saying like, push for Success Club 5, push for Success Club 5, that's not just me saying like, Success Club 5 is this magical weird number that you just have to hit. Now like, if you hit Success Club 5 every single month, that means that your business is growing by two or three or four people every single month, and that compounded over time is your business growing fully? No, sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Okay, so, oh, I lost my train of thought there. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, hitting Success Club. If you're hitting Success Club, you're on track, and your business is growing, and it's easy, easy as that. Okay, so get out of your own head. So if you're thinking right now that you're not jazzed up all the time, and you're like, Marie, I can't be as excited as you all the time. Like, sometimes I just feel blue. Sometimes I just feel lazy. I don't really want to do invites or follow-ups or send a new friend message every single day, blah, blah, blah. I get it. I totally understand, right? But that is why you need to learn how to get yourself fired up about it beforehand, you individually, right? Everybody's going to be different. And so tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you guys a bunch of the ways that I get myself jazzed up before I send out invites 
or answer messages. Because if I went at messages and I was feeling like they were a chore, they're going to come off as lackluster, right? That's just a fact. So I'm going to go through a list. I think I have five major ones. I've actually got about 10. Okay. So if you have pen and paper or if you're typing or whatever, you might want to take notes. I've got some stuff for you. All right. So number one, I make sure that I'm being proof of the product. Okay. I know you guys hear this over and over again. I sound like a broken record, but I commit myself daily to Shaco. I consistently try out new programs and I stay committed to my fitness journey and I read or listen to PD every single day. Those are literally the vitals as a coach, right? Coaching is so simple, but not only does doing these things enhance my sense of self and my self-esteem and my confidence and my, and everything, but it shows people that I'm not a fat phony, right? I actually use these programs. I actually drink Shakeology. It's actually reversed my indigestion and IBS and all this stuff. This shit actually works, right? Statistics show that 80% of sales are made between the fifth and 12th contact. That means that you have to stay consistent. So if you think that you're just going to put one post out there and everybody and their cousin are going to come flocking to you asking for a challenge back, that's not how it works, right? I've been doing this for almost two years now and I still have people ignore me. I still have people reject me all the time, all the time. If I could show you guys my inbox, some of the rejections I get, I, I have to laugh at them because I'm like, oh, I haven't seen that one yet. That's interesting. Okay. So you have to build trust and I build trust with people by being proof of the product. That's that's it. Like that's what you do, right? You just share you, you be proof of the product. This helps people to almost like experience it before they experience it. If that makes sense, you know, like if you see somebody on Facebook, um, like it's a bad example because we are in this, the fitness industry kind of thing. But if you see somebody on Facebook and they have lost 25 pounds and you're like, holy shit, I went to elementary school with Dana. Like she looks good. What's she doing? I know her. Like you can relate that success because you know that person personally, right? But if you see a commercial and it's some model using some skinny tea or whatever, it's like, Tina lost 25 pounds drinking tea talks, right? You're like, well, I don't know about that because I don't know Tina and I don't know if she's photoshopped and I don't know what this tea talk stuff is, right? But if you see Dana, you're like, wow, Dana and I used to play soccer together. We were in elementary school. Like, I know she had problems with losing weight back in high school even or whatever. I know her. So you feel like her success is relevant to your life. Okay, that's what we do. We help people to experience it before they even commit to it, which is so cool. And the biggest part of this is that if you're being proof of the product, you will have constant non-scale victories, right? You will have progress photos every few months. You will have new wins weekly. I'm constantly thinking of ways to celebrate myself because you have to do, you have to celebrate the process, right? You have to enjoy the process. It's not, I'll be happy when I lose 20 pounds. I'll be happy when I hit this goal financially. I'll be happy when I fit into this dress, right? You have to be happy along the way because Otherwise, you're just going to find you're unfulfilled and you're going to get to that goal. You'll be happy for a day or two. And then it's like, okay, well, what's next? Right? So there's some serious power. Number two, I make sure that I'm consistent. Okay. Not only in my everyday posts, but in my messaging, in my follow-ups, in my groups, right? If I say I'm going to host a team call, except for last week when I forgot, if I say I'm going to host a team call, I'm going to host a team call, even if nobody shows up, right? Have you guys ever seen me disappear for a full week, like off social media? No, because even when I'm on vacation, like in the spring, I was in Asia on a small island with barely any Wi-Fi. I'm still staying consistent. I might post once for that three-day period or whatever, but you know that I'm getting in my workouts when I can. I'm still drinking Shaco and I'm still reading PD and that is what counts, right? I'm not losing track of my journey. And then when I am sharing it, people are seeing that I'm still on track and I'm still doing my thing. All right. Uh, let's see what I got. Oh yeah. This is a good one. I came up with this and I just think it's so true. Okay. You've got to show up. Entrepreneurship is beautiful because you don't have to answer to anybody. Entrepreneurship is hard because you don't have to answer to anybody, right? You have to take responsibility and really dig deep. Tell yourself you're going to go in with this full on for one year. Can you imagine if you have, if you go full ass instead of half ass for one year, can you imagine what kind of crazy success you can have if you do that for yourself, right? So you got to ditch the fear, punch in the face, get over it and get uncomfortable and, and just do the thing. Okay, number three, battle objections publicly. There is a super, super awesome national wake-up call that Bonnie Engel did last spring, I think in March. Um, definitely, definitely worth going back to listen to. And one of the main reasons people 
are scared to invite is because we're scared people will object to our offer or they'll reject us, right? So I'm here to tell you guys that objections are actually a good thing. If somebody is objecting, it means that they are seriously considering it. An objection just means that they're, it's almost like a defense mechanism that we have as humans. If somebody says something to you and you object to it, it means you're considering the options and what your belief systems are and if you agree with it or disagree with it or you want to try it or you, you trust it or whatever. Okay, so somebody that's objecting to you, it means that they're actually considering what you have to offer. Consider that a good thing. And most people have zero clue about the value of anything we have to offer. They're like, oh, Beachbody? Oh, that 21 Day Fix program? I heard about it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that shake thing, right? You have to educate people. That's what you need to do. You have to be kind, you have to be patient, and you have to be confident in what you have to offer. Like we literally have the coolest job ever. We get paid to work out, to drink a chocolate shake, and to post on Facebook in our jammies. What, are you joking? Like that is the sweetest job ever. Are you kidding me? Okay, so when you craft a thoughtful <coughs> post that's to the point, battling objections publicly about, for example, uh, what's coming up, people budgeting, uh, tightening their budgets around the holidays, for example, right? That post is going to help way more people to realize that maybe they need to shift their perspective or maybe they need to think about it in a different way. I am in no way saying you need to push Beachbody on anybody. That is not what we are here for, right? Do not push your agenda on anybody, but tell people educate people, right? Give them the information so that they can make an educated decision. That's all you can do. You can just present it and you say, listen, this is what I've used. This is what's worked for me. This is how it's changed my life. Do you want to try it out? And if they don't, that's fine. See you later. I guarantee they're coming around in a year though. And they're going to be like, Hey, you're still doing that thing. You look really good. Can I try it now? Like that happens like crazy for me. So it will happen for you to stick with it. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, oh yeah, this goes with the same topic, but it just like, just share you, you guys share your value. You are so valuable and you are an individual, right? You have your own gifts and talents and your own way with words and your own likes and dislikes and interests and things that you can offer the people, right? I try to do this through live videos and I actually haven't been doing them very much lately because I was kind of going through some stuff in the last month. I let my tank Egg empty. I let my gas tank empty for sure. So now I'm on the path to filling it up, right? But I try to do live videos as a way to add value, to get myself out there, to build my confidence because you better believe sometimes I'm shaking in my little booties thinking about doing a live video, right? Some days you just don't feel very confident. But doing them helps me to show myself that I can, first of all, that I'm not going to die because of it. And third of all, it put Facebook algorithms push live videos like crazy. So I get lots of people's eyes on my page, which is what I want anyways, so that I can help more people. Do you see how this is? There's a method to my madness, right? Okay. Um, oh yeah. And if you guys want to look at, uh, the Bonnie angle, um, holiday objections, I don't know if anybody remembers, but I posted in the coach group, there's a link to the exact slides or maybe I even posted the slides. I can't remember. We'll have to, uh, somebody will have to confirm that for me, but, um, I'm just going to check the chat cause I just saw now that it was. Okay. Um, number four, be okay with failing forward. Sometimes coaching can feel like you're putting on a blindfold and then jumping on a crazy carpet and going down a hill. Like it can feel like that. Yes, but it does not have to is what I'm here to say. Okay. It is so simple. Our job is so simple. We work out, drink a shake, read or listen to PD and talk to people. That's all we do. Okay. And sometimes people overcomplicate it, but you have to be okay with being brave and you have to step outside of your comfort zone and be willing to learn every day, right? And do your best. You can only do as well as you can, right? So do that every single day and be damn proud of yourself for putting in that consistent effort necessary to succeed. That's it. Like, don't stress about anything else. You just do your best and that's it. And I promise you guys, if you do the vitals every single day and you refuse to give up, you will succeed big time as a coach. The success to be had in this business is like, mind-blowing, ceiling-shattering, big, okay? It's like, it's bigger than anybody can even imagine. And I've seen and talked to some of these coaches that have acquired this, and it's just time and effort, or sorry, it's consistency, 
plus time and effort, right? Those three things. Okay, number five. This is my last like preachy one and then I've got some actual sweet tips for you guys too. Treat this business like a business. Okay, sometimes it's hard to imagine that you could create a millionaire dream life with this business if you wanted to because the sign up is only 40 bucks or free if you bought a challenge pack, right? And you get to be your own boss. But if you thought about it and you worked it like a $100,000 business instead of a hobby, don't you think you'd be seeing the results you want to be seeing financially, right? And physically and all these different ways. Of course you would. So start treating this business like a job that you love, right? An opportunity that can totally transform your life and hold yourself accountable. Do the vitals, right? Especially inviting and following up with prospects and your current challengers and making sure people are, people are on track, okay? Um, who all here, I'm just, I'm curious for a second, who all here went to post-secondary? Did like trades or uh, university? Okay, and how many years, show of fingers, how many years did you spend? Okay. Do you see mine? I spent six years in university. I got two degrees, otherwise known as two awesome pieces of paper, okay? Yes, and I didn't get paid shit for that. I spent thousands of dollars and hours and tears on those two pieces of paper before I could even apply for a job. And with Beachbody, I get paid from the get-go, right? I literally get to get paid the week that I sign up as a coach. And if I put in five plus six years into Beachbody coaching, I don't know if you guys have seen any of the top coaches, but every single top coach that has worked the business for five plus years that has actually worked the business, they're all making bank, okay? And that's not what it's about, but they're all living lifestyles that they create now. They wake up, they're stay-at-home moms, they're stay-at-home dads, they all have beach houses, they do this thing, and it's the same job, your job never changes, right? The beach body coaching stays the same, you still do the same behaviors, it's just the compound effect of it is so, so beautiful. Alrighty, and I'm here to tell you guys too that like I have a dream for our team to be able to do that. I want to be able to help as many people on our team achieve that and live that life of freedom and be able to stay home with their babies and not have to worry about debt and be able to buy the damn shoes if they want to buy the shoes. You know what I mean? Like I want to help as many people be able to do that as possible because that's freaking cool. Okay, now I'm going to give you guys just a couple more tips on how I personally get over fear, like right in the moment. Because these ones are ones that maybe aren't as like common practice, but they're ones that definitely have helped me in the moment too. But I'm just going to take a sip of my tea because my mouth is getting dry. Okay, I created, uh, sorry. Okay, I created a, um, a get fired up folder on my desktop of my computer. Okay, I called it get fired up. You could call it, Ah, get confident. You could call it punch fear in the face, whatever you want to call it, whatever's going to work for you, right? I call it a get fired up folder. Every single time somebody messages me and they say, Hey, I just wanted to say thanks. You inspired me to go to the gym today. Hey, Marie, I'm so excited. I lost 20 pounds. Hey, this non scale victory happened. I put on my jeans from last summer and they fit. Um, hey, my IBS has gone from Shakeology. Hey, thank you so much for being so awesome. This is super random. I'm reaching out, blah, 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 blah. Anytime somebody reaches out to me and I'm like taken aback by a message, I screenshot that message and I put it in that folder. Because when I'm having a shitty day, and you know that we all have shitty days, right? We're humans. I'm like, I need to pick me up. Something needs to pick me up. I go right to that folder and I'm reminded of how many amazing people I get to work with. And I'm reminded of how many people appreciate what I do, right? When I'm facing somebody that maybe isn't appreciating or is or is making me feel like garbage or whatever, I'm letting them do that to me. So I go to that folder and I get fired up off of it. I'm like, damn, I get to work with some sweet people and they're awesome and I get to do awesome stuff with my job, right? <coughs> Another way that I get fired up is I listen to the video, it's called Unbroken by Matthias M on YouTube. You guys probably know that. He, Matthias M puts together these videos and I, honestly that Unbroken one without fail gets me just jazzed. Like I listen to that and I'm like, whoa, I'm going to take over the world, like now, right now. So definitely listen to that one. Or I'll listen to a podcast. I'll go for a walk if I'm able to. Usually I listen to like Earn Your Happy. Um, sorry, I'm kind of burpy right now. Um, Earn Your Happy or I've been listening to the uh, Good Life Project. That one's a really good one too. Or I'll listen to Tony Robbins because he's my spirit animal. So there's that. 
Okay. Um, if I feel like messages are going to be a chore and I'm like dreading answering messages for whatever reason, if I'm, if I've like worked all day and I, it's nighttime and I haven't answered my messages yet, I'm just like, Oh, I don't want to. Okay. I will take, I'll drink energize and I'll crush a workout. Or I will, um, like I said, go for a walk if it's still nice out. I will do yoga. I will move my body because when you move your body and you get your physicality going, it totally changes your state of mind. So I will change my physical state in order to change my mental state. And after I work out, oh my God, those endorphins, like post-workout, you're like, I can do anything. And then people can feel that, right? They can feel your energy. Um, number four, this is arguably one of the most important ones, okay? Okay because it makes your life so much easier. I pre-write out names of people to invite. Okay. This is massive. I used to just wing it. Okay. I used to just scroll Facebook. I would write down 20 names on a Saturday or whatever, and it would cause me stress and it would cause me lack of confidence because I'd feel like there was no people left. Right. Which is ludicrous because there are literally millions of people on Facebook. We get to work with anybody across North America, Puerto Rico, and a military base. Like that's a lot of names. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Okay. So I started this notebook and it, it's my workable names notebook. Right. And I will add to it all the time. I will add to it when I get likes on a certain post. If somebody's likes a transformation post or they like a, um, any, whatever about a challenge group, about a coaching opportunity, or somebody reaches out to me or I run into somebody in the grocery store or uh, I don't even know, right? I'll do a brain dump of every single person I know that hasn't yet joined me or I haven't talked to in a long time. And you'd be surprised, names will keep cropping up, okay? So that list is constantly expanding. And then I have two other lists that I work from. So between these three lists, I just constantly keep my funnel full, okay? The other one that I do is a new friends list. So every single day, like maybe one or two days of the week, I forget, but every single day I add three to five new friends to my friends list. And the only thing I do is I go to Facebook suggested friends and I check and see if they're friends with a bunch of my coaches or other beach buddy coaches. And if they are, then okay, no, thank you. No, thank you. Right. And then I just look and I'm like, Hey, do they look like they're a serial killer? No. Do they look like they're nice? Yeah. Add. That's it. That's all I do. And as soon as they accept my friend request, I send a little message. I just say, Hey, this is what I do. This is what I'm about. If you're interested, let me know. Have a sweet day. Bye. And nine times out of 10, somebody will respond and they'll say, Hey, that sounds really cool. Thanks so much. And I'll say, no worries. Have a great day. That's it. And I don't invite them to a challenge group and I don't invite them to coach and I don't word vomit on them. I leave it. Right. And then I put their name down. And then over the course of that next month, I will go back and I will add value to their page. I will comment on their posts or their photos. And then the next month or maybe a month after that, I'll send them an invite to a challenge group because they've already had a chance to see my shit on Facebook, right? They've already had a chance to kind of build a trust relationship with me instead of me just bombarding them with this crazy girl Facebook entrepreneurship thing, right? I've been bombarded with people before and it sucks right? It's, it doesn't feel authentic. It doesn't feel real. So we really need to treat people how we want to be treated. That's massive. Okay. Uh, and then my third list is, where am I? Oh, my follow-up list. This is huge. I hope you guys have a follow-up list for every single month because some people are like, Hey, I'm having a baby in January. And you're like, sweet. You're having a baby in January. Well, do you want me to check in with you in like February or March to see if you want to like lose a baby weight? And they're like, actually, that'd be really nice. Thanks. Are you going to remember that if you don't write it down? Nuh-uh, so write it down, right? So I have, I have a follow-up list for every single month. And my December, January, February lists, <coughs> excuse me, are already full because I've already had people from September, October, November, whatever, say, I'm not ready yet. A month would be great. In two months would be great. In three months would be great, right? You just have to stay uh, on top of it and keep track of people. The follow-up is massive. The follow-up is where the gold is, I don't know what analogy I'm trying to use there, but use, use your follow-up list. Okay. So between those three lists, I'm always having people to talk to, right? This is so vital because by always having people to talk to, I'm always building that momentum. That momentum is constantly going. You guys know, um, when you're pumping a well, okay. When you're pumping a well at first, it's super difficult, right? <clears throat> Oops, sorry. When you're pumping a well, it's super difficult at first, right? You have to pump, pump. There's no water, no water, no water. And then eventually you're pumping and you're putting the exact same amount of effort in and all of a sudden some water starts to pump and all of a sudden your well starts, your pump starts going and you don't have to work as hard and you're just like, water is just flowing, right? But if you stop, the water stops 
and then you have to go through that whole motion again of trying, 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 trying to like pump that water. But if you keep going with it, I don't know why like I'm knocking on wood. Okay, if you keep pumping that well, the water is going to keep going and eventually you just have to put in minimal effort because you're just maintaining, you're just being consistent and you've got big momentum on your side, right? You want big momentum on your side. So when I'm constantly adding three to five friends new day, a day, when I'm constantly inviting three to five new people to try a program or to coach or whatever every single day, that's so small in the short term, but long term built over time, compounded over time, that momentum builds for me, right? And then you start to have people that come to you. And that's a beautiful thing. So when you have that, you never feel panicked about hitting success club. You never feel panicked about coming off salesy or pushy, right? You're just you. And when you're just you, people want to join you. And then when they join you, you're still just you and you're not panicky or salesy or pushy and you help them have an awesome experience and you keep inviting new people. And then the momentum takes place and it's just this cycle and it's awesome. It's just so awesome, right? But that's what I wanted to get at tonight with getting over fear being confident in what you're doing and just inviting because when you're inviting, you are giving people the opportunity to change their lives. And I don't know a better gift than that. I really don't. So anyways, that is it. That's all I have right now for notes and stuff. I hope you guys are able to take some of the things that I've said tonight and start tomorrow. I hope that you'll be able to start to attack your fear tomorrow because when you do the thing, you grow and you learn and you experience joy and the compound effect of it all is just crazy, right? It's just, it's nuts. And I'm speaking from experience here. It's trust the process because it's really cool. Um, we only have about seven minutes left. Does anybody have any questions or comments about that ramble that I just went on for the last 40 minutes? Mm, I guess I should unmute you, hey? I'm going to do that right now. All right. Does anybody have any questions? I, I do. I always feel so crappy when I get objections. So I don't know how to like face an objection and be more confident about it, I guess. Okay. For the first, like, I would say like the first eight months of me coaching, probably to a year actually, I have this document on my desktop and I save it to a Google document so that I have it on my phone too if I'm not on my computer. And I would save my exact scripts that I would make facing every single objection because for the first eight months to a year or whatever, you're still really new, right? And you're learning and sometimes you don't feel as confident with certain oh, Okay, but you will find a way to say something that will help shed light and to help change somebody's perspective on it. I... I can post an objection document in our page. I think I have, maybe, have I? I think, think there's a bunch. There's some, but you're gonna have to find what works for you, right? Like use your own language, find what works for you. For example, something that I would say, if somebody says, um, what would they say? If somebody tells me, hey Marie, I don't do shakes. I would be like, that is great. I don't either because usually they feel crap. Usually it's just a protein powder. You don't know the source of it and you get what you pay for, right? That's why I love Shakeology so much because Shakeology is a green supplement. It's a pre-probiotic, which is also vegan, which is hard to find, okay? It is a multivitamin for me, which I no longer have to buy. It has superfoods in it, specifically phytonutrients and antioxidants that I don't, I would otherwise purchase in superfood format, which are super expensive. And what else? And it's got a full protein profile. So it's basically like buying breakfast for 31 days. It turns out to be about 480 Canadian a glass, which is ridiculously awesome. It's less than a Red Bull, right? So I would just have those kind of things because I've said that so many times to people and just said, listen, like buying breakfast for three days, like that's what it is. And they have a bottom of a bag guarantee. So if you hate it and you empty the bag, they'll get your money back. That's how confident they are in the product. So you just define the things that work for you and the reasons why you back it. Like for me, it's reversed my IBS from celiac disease and 10 years of pain in my gut, right? That is massive. So I'm like number one advocate for Shakeology and how natural and awesome it is because of those reasons, but you're going to have different reasons too, right? Maybe it's getting you through breastfeeding. Maybe it's keeping your energy levels stable. Maybe somebody's a, a diabetic and it's keeping their blood sugar level. Maybe, you know, like there's all these different reasons, but just when you attach you to it and you say like, listen, this is my story. This is what I feel about it. And then make their decision. Okay. Does that help any? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. you can, we can also work on that too. I can help with objections. 
Does anybody else have any questions? Also, TJ, I love your new hair. Looks good. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no questions at all? Nada. Okay, if you guys have any questions, you know you can just post on the coach page or just message me. Our policy is pretty, pretty open door on this team. <laughs> I don't know. It's people helping people. It's actually, it's, if Megan's on the call, I don't think she is, but she found a sweater and it was, what was it? Babes supporting babes. Yeah. I think yeah. I, I need to like make sweaters for us that say Can that. You? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. Well, actually I'm making hoodies and tanks. So hello, hit success club five and emeralds this month. Hello. We should get them. We should get them for summit. Oh no. Like we're going to get them for summit. Yeah. For sure. We should too. Okay. I'm going to get cut off right away because my meeting time is on the free count. So it's going to cut me off. And if nobody has any questions, no questions. Okay. Nobody's any questions. I think you guys are all fabulous. And I hope that this helped at all. Um, next week we have Morgan Rieger speaking on our call and she's going to talk about duplicating the coach opportunity before you feel like you're ready. So show up for that one. Cause it's going to be bomb ass. It's going to be awesome. Okay. And she would be more than happy if you poured yourself a glass of wine before. So, and if you're doing quarter pours, like I'm pretty sure every single one of us are on the call, then we can just pour fake wine. Uh. <laughs> okay. I'll drink for all of you. Yeah, Logan, you're going to be wasted, but okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, okay, I'm ending the meeting. I'll post the recording in the group. You guys are fabulous, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye. 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 Bye.